A lot of people have asked me, what's the difference between gross margin and contribution margin? But to answer that, we first need to say, what do we even mean by the term gross margin? Now, Apple and a lot of other companies define gross margin as their net sales minus their cost of sales or cost of goods sold. But sometimes people say, you know what, no, 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 that's actually gross profit when you take net sales and subtract cost of goods sold. And when you take gross profit and divide it by net sales, that's a company's gross margin. So we're going to ignore that in this video because I'm going to do an example using Apple's actual financial statements. So we're going to take their definition of gross margin, which is net sales minus cost of goods sold or aka minus cost of sales. Now, what is contribution margin? Contribution margin is a company's net sales minus its total variable costs. Okay, so the contribution margin and the gross margin. In each case, we're starting with a company's net sales, but then we're subtracting something different. With gross margin, we're subtracting cost of goods sold, and with contribution margin, we are subtracting total variable costs. Now, some people will be like, well, what's the difference? Isn't cost of goods sold a variable cost? Well, when we look at a manufacturer like Apple, cost of goods sold is going to have a variable and a fixed component. Okay, there's going to be variable costs included in cost of goods sold and fixed costs. And you say, what are the fixed costs that would be included in Apple's cost of sales? Well, you're going to have manufacturing overhead, and manufacturing overhead has a variable component to it, and it has a fixed component to it. Okay, so the fixed component of manufacturing overhead that is ultimately going to be expensed through Apple's cost of goods sold. Okay, so when you look at Apple's gross margin, which we will in a minute, okay, when you subtract that cost of goods sold or cost of sales, as they refer to it, is when you subtract that cost of sales, there are some fixed costs being deducted from net sales to get gross margin. Whereas when we calculate their contribution margin, which I'm going to do using some assumptions, they don't actually pre uh, present it on their income statement. When you calculate their contribution margin, there are no fixed costs being subtracted. You're just subtracting variable costs from net sales to get contribution margin. Another difference is here we're subtracting all the variable costs, not just variable costs that have to do with cost of goods sold. So for example, variable selling costs, such as sales commissions, would be deducted from net sales in getting Apple's contribution margin, but you would not subtract sales commissions from net sales in order to get gross margin. Okay, so let's uh, look at Apple's actual income statement. We actually have a partial uh, of three different income statements here for the years ended September 25th, 2021, and then 2020, and then 2019. So we're just going to focus on uh, this income statement right here. And you can see we've got the total net sales and then the total cost of sales, aka cost of goods sold. So you got the net sales and you subtract the cost of sales and you get to gross margin right here. So they had a gross margin uh, of a little over $152 billion because these amounts are in millions. Now uh, let's get to, let's break this down. I made a little simpler uh, income statement here. So you can see again, this is the same numbers from the income statement you just looked at, but we've got their net sales minus their cost of sales, AKA cost of goods sold is their gross margin. Okay, a little over 152 billion. So this cost of sales figure, right? There's gonna be some fixed costs that are in there. It's not just variable costs that are in that cost of sales. Any fixed manufacturing overhead costs, right? So fixed manufacturing overhead are going to be a part of that cost of sales. But when you calculate their contribution margin, fixed manufacturing overhead would not be subtracted. Okay. Now, notice that here we've got selling general and administrative expense. So we've got some selling costs in here. Let's say that there were some sales commissions that Apple had to pay to some of its staff, right? So those sales commissions were not deducted to calculate gross margin because they are down here after they've already calculated gross margin. So now to calculate, because they didn't actually disclose their contribution margin, I made some assumptions here. We need to make some assumptions about what percentage of each cost is variable, what percentage is fixed. So I'm going to assume here that the cost of sales is 75% variable, 25% fixed. So if we go back here, the cost of sales, a little over $212 billion. I'm going to assume that 25% of that is fixed. Just for the sake of this example, Apple didn't actually disclose that. Uh, we're going to assume that the R&D, which we see right here, is 100% fixed. And then the SG&A right here, I'm going to assume that 80 percent of that is fixed and 20 percent is variable okay so now if we do that we make those assumptions and now i've got a, a contribution margin income statement here that i made 
Okay, now we've got the same net sales as we had before, but now we're calculating contribution margin, not the gross margin. So with gross margin, we just took net sales and we subtracted the cost of sales. But now we are only subtracting the variable component of cost of sales, okay? And then the variable component of SG&A, okay? Let's say that pertains to sales commissions or something like that. And so we take net sales and we just subtract the variable costs that gives us the contribution margin for Apple. Whereas when we had done it before and we did the gross margin, we took the net sales and we only subtracted the cost of sales. Here, you see, for example, the fixed cost, the, the, the cost of sales, the percent or proportion of cost of sales, I had a little over 53 billion being fixed costs. Let's say that that's fixed manufacturing overhead here. Okay, this would not be deducted in calculating contribution margin, right? That's why I've got it below. But when you calculate the gross margin, you subtract the entire cost of sales, both variable and fixed component.